It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm uh, the spy that came in from the cold, Wayne Miller. Well, okay, warm up because this is It's Movie Time. It is. All right, we need something for our audience. This is after the Oscars. It's always a letdown. Oh, yeah, it's a dry season. So we explored our local theater yep. to see All the Old Knives. Which, John, I was looking forward to, uh, thinking that it would be a little bit more John or James Bondy, but mm -hmm. it isn't. Mm -hmm. It's a really kind of a thinking spy yeah. genre film in the, in the tradition of a John Le Carre. Yeah, and it's... I, one of the interesting things is Chris Pine is uh, graduating from being the chief detective on Star Trek. Yeah. To, <laughs> to, hey, Captain James <laughs> T. Yeah. Uh, to a kind of salt and pepper, early middle-aged guy. I know. Uh, and this is what was interesting about this movie, that um, uh, it cuts back and forth. Uh, over an eight-year span, when uh, he and uh, the gorgeous Tandy, I like to say Tandy. Yeah, Tandy Newton. Yeah, it used to be people pronounced the we at the end, the W-E, yeah. and they she got away from that, so it's just Tandy now. Yeah, I think. And, uh, but beautiful young lady, and he's a handsome guy. That's one of the main draws of this movie is how photogenic they are. Yeah. And they come across very well on the screen. And then, of course, you know, you see them, what I felt kind of almost notably aged over <laughs> the eight years when the movie first starts out. And, uh, and then uh, as during flashbacks, you, you know, see that they were lovers. Especially she, and I wonder if that's built in, that she got kind of weary after that eight years well, she and, looked at. Well, and her care, and of course they're both carrying a lot of the baggage and, and they kind of set it up. There's a Turkish airline uh, uh, plane that is kidnapped with over a hundred people on board with these terrorists. And the CIA, uh, they must have gone to um, Vienna, Austria because it yep. was the CIA's uh, bureau office in uh, Vienna, uh, headed by and this was another disappointment. I thought he'd be in it more, but it was almost a, just a glorified cameo. Lawrence Fisher. I know. He's becoming the number one candidate for this kind of role. Yeah. Playing the big, inscrutable guy. Yeah. Um, Wh which kind of reminds me when he did uh, a couple seasons uh, near the end on one of my favorite uh, TV shows, the, uh, the Las Vegas version of uh, CSI. All right. And uh, uh, that he was kind of like a chief. And here's a, he's a chief. Also, that I thought one of the better uh, small supporting roles was Jonathan Price. Oh, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Uh, yeah. I remember walking around London and, and coming across Jonathan Price's estate. Uh, of course, it, it might as well have been uh, somewhere far east because you couldn't get in that thing if you wanted. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, I think my companion at that time was wondering, you know, what kind of an oligarch he was. And I said, no, yeah, he's just simply a very working. Uh, after. Oh, yes, all over the place from a certain BBC TV series to movies and uh, the stage. But anyhow, we digress. And we, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can do this on back talk. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, so the, the main thing is that, um, uh, not to give it away, but it's, you read any reviews and they mention that uh, the plane is blown up and everybody dies, crew, passengers, and the terrorists. And yeah, more than a hundred people. Yeah, everybody, including an agent on board. Yeah, and the uh, and the CIA believes that there was, and this is one thing that's almost used <laughs> as a MacGuffin, uh, like Hitchcock would do in movies. You know, something that's really integral to the plot, but uh, it's it's clouded in mystery, and you don't know much about it. And in Hitchcock movies, he didn't really care. Yeah, and uh, and here. There's a mole among the CIA who leaked right. information to the terrorists. Not unknown to spy novels, and I think many of them uh, kind of move to that place where you begin to look inside rather yeah. than outside, and I like it. That's intriguing. Yeah. Uh, when you're given more coverage for the possible suspects, which I found to be the limitation of this film. Yeah, because you're. It's almost like who done it? Like who's the mole? And uh, then boom. It's eight years later. Uh, 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 Tandy is married with two children. 
Uh, he's, uh, the Chris Pine character, Henry, is still with, uh, and her name's um, uh, uh, Cel Celia, I believe. Oh, uh, uh, Tandy is uh, Celia Harrison. Yeah, Celia. Yeah. And um, so she's moved on uh, with her life outside of the Bureau. He has it, but the CIA, uh, he's still with the CIA, and they've decided to reopen the, this case of who's the mole. So a lot of the movie is an afternoon and evening in uh, some little barn. Uh, Camden, I think it's called Camden by the Sea in California. No, it is. Carmel by the Sea. Carmel by the Sea. Formerly, the mayor was. Oh, uh, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> right. And it is, it is exceptionally beautiful. I always remember the opening scene oh. uh, in um, uh, the Clint Eastwood movie, uh, Play Misty for Me. Yes, In yes. which he's driving his little convertible yes. up that sea. Interesting yes. here is going north to south, which you can't do. It has to be going south to north, and you so because you had the sea on the right side. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so, they, but, but who cares, right? Maybe they reverse the negative. <laughs> and, and, and when they cut the and out. and <clears throat> half the film is in this restaurant. Yes. And and uh, don't get too much in love with it because it was constructed on a UK stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. But also, you didn't get really too much of a feel for it because of all the multiple uses of close-ups. I mean, you could count every little whisper in uh, Chris Pine's stomach. It's a good thing they're, good they're good-looking. Yes, yes, wow, it is. Uh, and, and, and Linda, who found it to be a little bit tedious, yeah. did not find his blue eyes tedious. Yeah, oh, I could imagine. Yes. Uh, a good-looking guy, good-looking lady. <laughs> one, this is, that's one of the draws, especially one of their flashback scenes when they were lovers eight or so years earlier. Yeah. Uh, uh, a rather, rather steamy, you know, um, uh, I found sex it. Scene. I found it gratuitous. Yeah. I, I don't think it was necessary. Right. But then I'm, uh, uh, our other colleague here, uh, Johnny DiLoretto, yeah. thinks that people want to see these two people steaming it up. Oh, well, probably so. He's probably And right. to catch a little bit of, especially uh, parts of her body. Yes, which yes. we do. We get little uh, fleeting glimpses yes. of her bosom, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah. but, but anyhow, it's uh, uh, it, the movie kind of took on kind of a my dinner with Andre Bond, you know, uh, <laughs> yes, oh boy, uh, type of vibe. You know answers. what they call what they call a two hander. The whole yeah. half of the movie is just the two yes. actors. Yes, uh, and some reviews that I read about this, they found it a bit confusing. Uh, cutting back and forth to the eight years before. It was a bit, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank God for his uh, beard and... Uh, oh, and longish hair in the and, early... Right, right. Her, uh, longish hair and kind of uh, 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 parted and swooping across yeah. her yeah. forehead yeah. early on, and that's when you could tell these are youngins uh, <laughs> more so than how the years have kind of taken their toll about eight years later. <laughs> uh, the... You would remember... In this, the that how we're moving toward the end, mm. and wondering if there's really going to tie all the ends in, and I think they do, don't they? They they, they do to a certain extent. Um, it still makes you wonder. Uh, I, I, I still can't figure out what information possibly was passed by the mole to the terrorists. And now we don't want to give it away, though. You know, we don't want to yeah, give yeah. away. Well, we don't even know. We can't give anything away if we don't know it. Yeah, I think I have a good guess, but I, I, I won't guess. Now, one review said that it was telegraphed a mile away, you know, or uh, that uh, uh, it was quite obvious, you know, who uh, the bad guy you think it is. But it makes you wonder, though, how, uh, you know, we always hear about how the KGB would. Uh, uh, dispense of uh, old spies, you know, yes, other things yes. like that. And I'm sure, and and, uh, and also, oh, what was it? Kind of reminded me of uh, that memorable TV series with Patrick McGowan, The Prisoner, that was basically based on his secret agent character, who um, uh, uh, instead of retiring uh, these old agents, they move them into some like little community type of thing. And so, but here, it seems like they want to kind of like. Mm, you know, clean up, you know, some of the uh, people. But well, they, they throw a red herring in early. Yeah. Which yeah. is way too early. Yeah. Yeah, so that, doesn't, that didn't work very well, although it was within 
the requirements of the genre. Yeah. And I think that they were trying to hold on to that, <clears throat> to that pace and that formula as much as they could. And, and then kind of devolving into this two-handed that we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is, I think, at the theater, a nice afternoon. I, we had a good time. Of course, we're, we help it out by going to, to happy hour ahead of time. Uh, yeah, having a couple of martinis <laughs> always kind of helps, especially when it's a, uh, a spy movie. <laughs> a spy movie. So I don't think it was a total loss, particularly since it was like renting the theater right. to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which it was. It was just the three of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Wayne Miller, okay. the film is All the Old Knives. Yes. It is available both online and mm -hmm. at your theater. Right. What do you recommend? I, I recommend it with uh, strong reservations. If you're going in expecting an action flick, right. you're not going to get it. But uh, an action flick of the mind. Right. You know, Very good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not born identity. No. Yeah, or, or James Bond, or my, uh, everything else. <laughs> if people want to hear more, I can't believe they want to hear more uh, prattling here, uh, they'll have to go to Back Talk. Well, okay, well, if, I guess if they want to take a snooze or something. <laughs> hey, no, no, yeah, Back Talk is always It's fun. available on WCBE.org uh, yeah. uh, under the podcast experience. Yes. Yes, and uh, don't get it mixed up with like the science ones and stuff like that. <laughs>